Okay, let's see if I can put together a quick, really quick video on associated board, theory, grade six, question one B, the second one, the slightly less popular question where we really need to apply the um, figure base. It's the same type of question as the one A, because we need to harmonize a melody line, a given melody line, but we have to provide a bass line and the figure bass. Um, so let's get at it. Um, I have done, I scanned a few. I think it's from uh, 2017. Let's see the blank one. That's the blank one. There we go. Okay. Now you should be seeing that that blank. Um, so a few considerations. Let's see. It's in the key of B flat. It's in the key of B flat, and uh, you can see straight away going down to the cadence, to the final cadence there. And cadence point. Now, there are two spots. This is one. And that's another, which lends itself to cadential treatment of some sort. So, what chord am I, going to, am I going to cadence to here? What chord am I going to cadence to there? Um, the given part, that's it. Uh, it's an ascending line. That bass line starts ascending, something that we should notice. Okay, should be able to see it now. This is the first solution to that. Now, I, I put in the Roman numerals as well. You don't need to put in the Roman numerals. They don't want the Roman numerals. All you need to give them is the figure, like that six, when necessary. And it would appear that I managed this in mostly root position chords. All of these are root position chords. All of these are root position chords. Well, let's see what I've done here. Let's see what I've done here. I'm gonna play one, two, three. So I go all the way up to chord six here. I cadence on chord six there. And I cadence on one here. So this G, I harmonize it as chord four in root position, followed by five in root position, followed by six in root position. You need to be extra careful in general when you have chord four and five or five and six, one after the other, or even four, five, six, like that in root position, because there is a danger for parallels. And the way I avoid this is that my bass line is moving in contrary motion. And there you go, the parallels are avoided, at least between the melody and the bass line, but there's nothing else for you to provide. There's nothing else for you to provide, just the bass line and the figuring. So no figure, no figure, no figure there because it's all root position. You don't need the Roman numerals, you leave it blank. Now, after that, I harmonize that G. I harmonize that G as a C minor in first inversion. So I'm coming from the G minor. Right. C minor in first inversion, first inversion, just to, uh, uh, it could have been a root position, 
could have? No, I couldn't. Why can't in B root position? Because I would have had parallel fifths by either similar motion or contrary, parallel motion or contrary motion. Okay? So this had to be a first inversion. Why not a second inversion? Because the second inversion does something very specific, which is not required there. Uh, so I put a first inversion there, and by doing so, I avoided parallel fifths, which could have been by either parallel motion or contrary motion. Parallel fifths by contrary motion, which are a thing. They have to be avoided. So uh, there you go. Now that... In bar five, now I put chord five, chord five, followed by uh, chord seven, chord five in root position, followed by chord seven in root position as well. Chord seven functioning as a dominant seven in first inversion without the root, rootless, as it does. So resolving on one. There you go. And then after one, after chord one, in root position again, so no figuring, root position, root position, no figures, root position, no figures. Then I like the sound of chord three there, because I have the A. Three, root position, four in root position, five in root position, Couldn't have been easier. Let's have a look at my uh, second solution. There we go. Now, my second solution. Uh, right. I do something slightly different with the bass line here. Instead of, see, instead of um, resolving to the G, there I resolve on to the B flat. So I resolve on the tonic. Here, whereas I cadence on the on chord six right there, so it's the opposite of what I've done earlier, and I do it slightly slightly differently. So let's see the sound of this one. inversion so in bar four I have for one I keep the bass where it is and I make become I make that become a uh, chord six in first inversion so I harmonize that as chord six in first inversion. It feels a little bit weak because the bass doesn't move and chord six has two notes in common with chord one. So as a uh, chord movement is it's, it's weak and it feels weak, uh, but it's possible. What happened there is there. Now there is a six in first inversion there. So you, all that's needed there is the figure six. Now there, there, it's a little bit unusual. And what I've done here, I put the chord five in first inversion with a passing note, with a passing note becoming still chord five with a seven, dominant seven, in root position. Resolving on the relative minor, resolving on chord six here this time for variety. And then the same final cadence as before. Same final cadence as before. second solution to that.
let's get rid now of this and let's call up my third solution of that. Now, what did I do with this? Let me see. All right, now the baseline goes up to the G here again. And I do something different with the base there. I do something different with the base there. I think that's the best baseline of all because look, it goes all the way up to the B flat right there, passing through the A here. Let's hear the sound of it. Two, three. Five. See, going from five in first inversion in bar five, keeping the bass, making it become seven in root position, that again feels a tiny bit weak, but it connects so nicely to chord one there. Uh, I could have done, I suppose, what I've done earlier. I'd say that could have worked better. Oh, oh well. Anyway, uh, what I do in bar four, I cadence on chord six, and then I keep the G, I cadence on chord six, I keep the G where it is, and make it become a first inversion chord, so it becomes chord four in first inversion. Um, yeah, probably this would have been better, but it didn't occur to me then. Do, do, do. And make that a five seven, probably like in the previous one. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so I need a seven there. Yeah. And that's the third one. So let's see the fourth solution that I have. And let's share it. Bam. Bam. Okay, let's get rid of number three. No, no, no. I'm not going to save the changes. There you go. Okay, I did something funny here in bar six. I wanted something different here. Instead of chord one or six, I thought, hmm, I'm coming from seven. What happens if instead of treating this seven as a dominant seven, you know, in first inversion, what happens if I treat it as chord seven and I make it go all the way well, it's it's. I, I make it. I make it behave like it's at the top of the circle of fifths, and make it go to three. So seven not functioning as a dominant, but seven functioning as seven, hence going to three, and that's what I'm doing here. And it sounds different considering that we've been here in chord one or six here, it's going to sound different, but um, it works. Um, now, let's play this. One, oops, no, no. One, two, three. <laughs> Now, 
because of that tree. Now, what sounds a little bit mm, off is that it's not too bad, I suppose. It's not too bad. Uh, but you can hear how going from seven to three, it's perfectly fine. we're going from, from three to one in first inversion. So I'm keeping the D in the bass, I'm only jumping down an octave. That's probably what sounds a bit off. I wonder, wouldn't it sound better chord one in uh, root position? Chord one in root position would be coming from... I think it would sound slightly better. From bar five and I'll try the lower octave, bar five. Yeah, maybe one in a good position sounds better there. But anyway, that's very quickly what goes on in my mind when I do these things. And if you have any questions, fire away. If you want the PDFs, send me an email. If you want to get in touch, please do get in touch. If you want, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all the user mambo jambo. This is just something that I put together very quick. I let my mind woo, race through it. Thanks very much for listening. I hope it's been helpful. And peace out.